and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. Today's Gospel reading, a lot of you know, it's, it's the Beatitudes. It's a famous sermon by Jesus, and some say maybe one of the famous by Jesus. And today I'd like to talk about the Beatitudes, but first, kind of break down that word. It's the B attitudes, what you should be in order to live the life of disciple of Jesus Christ. And we know about attitude, right? Attitude is something that's more powerful than education. And attitude's more powerful than money. You can have a ton of money but you can't buy happiness, right? I mean, there's the famous Beatles song. Yeah, I listen to the Beatles, right? I'm a big Beatles fan. Can't buy me love, right? Everybody knows that song. You know, can't buy me love, I buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right, etc. You know, but I don't care too much for money because money can't buy me love. Attitude's more important than success. Like, we, we see success go to people's heads. We see it every day in the paper. You know, the guy who's done so well, he gets his first big contract in sports, and it goes to his head, and then he fails to deliver on the, on the field or the court. It's, the B attitude is about the fundamental attitudes of life that Jesus teaches us, about the kind of people that Jesus wants us to be as his followers. There are nine Beatitudes. It says blessed, where well, we can translate that to happy or joyful. Happy are the poor in spirit. Now this is an odd phrase for our 21st century years. What do you mean, happy are the poor in spirit? What does that mean? It really means people that know that they need God in their lives. That's the poor in spirit. They know they need the riches of God that by themselves, they're not going to accomplish anything. It's God that accomplishes things through them. And you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, if you're poor, you might realize that you need God more than others. And it, it could be true. Some of you here today may say, you know, the only person I got to turn to sometimes is God in order to survive. But the poor in spirit, it's not just the economically poor, it's everyone. And I have young men and women at, in the youth group at St. Mark's and here at St. George's. You know, they tell me that they see a lot of bad things in the world. There's a lot of bad stuff going on, we, we all know. Suicide bombers and that type of thing. And you know what these kids pray for a lot when I hear them pray at, at youth group? They, every night it seems like they pray for safety for them and their families. Because they see that bad that's going on in the world. And they know their need for God. I mean, these are teenagers, and they, they, know, they, need, they, they know they need God in their lives. The second one is Jesus said, happy are those who mourn. Again, that's another kind of weird thing, happy those to mourn. It, doesn't, it kind of doesn't make sense at first. So the translation really is, Happy are those who have a big heart. And what I mean by a big heart is happy are those that have sympathy for others who have misfortune. And I'll use my wife as an example. She's not here today, so yet yeah, she'll be here. You know, every morning we get up and we sit down, and we, I get my coffee, she gets her tea, and we have our breakfast, and she reads the paper. And I always tell her, you know, don't start on the front page, but every morning she does. She reads whatever the story of the day is that talks about the, the sad thing that happened. And every morning she's like, isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? You know, and she's, you know, that's kind of how my wife is. She's very, like, outgoing, and she, she feels 
these people's sadness. I gotta say I'm a little more reticent. I guess I kind of you know, know that the, the newspaper a lot of times is bad news. It's not necessarily good news. Um, my father taught me to start with the sports page, you know, just reality. You know, this is what happened, you know. So then I get to the sad stuff. Um, so Jesus is saying to us, happy are those who mourn. He's holding up this attitude, this be attitude, to have genuine feelings of sympathy for the misfortune of others. Third, happy are those who are humble and meek. Now that's a word we don't hear too often, being humble or meek. That's really not in the American culture. You know, the American culture is go out, be your best, do your best, make the most money, get the best car, get the bigger house, whatever. You know, it's all about progressing and, and doing better in life. But we're not really talking about, you know, that. I, I think Humility is knowing kind of where you're at in, wor in the world and doing, and doing your best. Real humility is knowing that you need to do your job or your mission in life, the one that's God given you, God, God gave you. And using your gifts, but humbly, not bragging about. It. You know, knowing what you're good at and offering it to others freely is a B attitude. Doing it humbly for the sake of others is a beatitude. And that's what Jesus is talking about when he says be humble. The fourth one is happy are those who are hunger and thirst for what is right. And I think we can guess that one. That's all about justice. And Jesus is talking about, you know, justice for all. If you see something wrong, call it out. A lot of you know Lester over there. And I saw Lester had a boot on his foot this morning. I said, what's up, Lester? What happened? <clears throat> he said, four guys jumped on me. And I said, yeah. And he said, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm hurt, but I'm okay. I mean, I, it could have been worse. He goes, three of them came back the day after and said, I'm sorry. I think that's an awesome uh, example of happier those who hunger and thirst for what is right. And they had justice in their hearts and came back. And, and said they're sorry to them. Fifth is, happy are those who are merciful and kind. And I was thinking about this the other day, and I, I remember several years ago, I was driving my car actually through my own neighborhood, and I rolled through a stop sign. I didn't stop, I rolled, kind of rolled through it. And a policeman was right there, of course, right? And then he came up to me and he handed the thing and I'm like, you know, ready for the ticket. And he says, I need a big stop. There's a lot of kids in this neighborhood, which I knew real well because it was my neighborhood. He says, I need you to make big stops. We got to take care of our kids. We don't want anybody hurt. You know, we have to be careful. And it, it really just stopped me. And I still remember that. I mean, it was like five years ago. And I've been a lot more careful. Um, and he said, I'm just handing you a warning. Now, that's a sign of being merciful, because he had me nailed, all right? And I would have admitted it. But this firm but kind, merciful cop told me what I really needed to hear. Now, be careful. There's kids in the neighborhood, you know? And it slowed me down. So I remember that warning as, as being very merciful. Six, happy are the pure of heart. Pure heart, the one I think about is, you know, people with dirty minds, with lusty <coughs> thoughts. And let's admit it, we all been there, okay? And today with TV and with even ads in the paper, with the internet, it's full of pornography and those type of things. And if you know if you go down that road, it's not a happy road. It's, it's an addiction for a lot of people. It's, it's something that, you know, I'm not the Baptist preacher that's going to sit here and say fire and brimstone, you know, and hell and all that. But I will say it's an unhappy road and it doesn't lead anywhere, but it definitely leads away from God. So when I say happy or the pure heart, I got to tell you, you got to be, it's just the bottom line where you have to make a decision. 
in your life and you go, I got to avoid it. I just have to avoid that road because it's not going to lead me anywhere. It's going to lead me to a dead end. You know, and every time we say the Our Father, both here at church and when you say it on your own, we say it every time. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Seventh, blessed are the peacemakers. Now this one I know about, because it is it's one of the jobs I do to make a, a living for my family. I'm a mediator, I'm a professional mediator, and I see people every day, lawyers and people who are in lawsuits, or about to be in lawsuits. And my speech before every mediation is, today is the day to take off your gloves. There's no fighting today. Today's about making peace and about resolving whatever your problem is. So we, we just create this place where you can safely go and you self-determine, both sides, have to be self-determined to make a decision to come to a mutual resolution, whatever it is. And I tell people, you know, the joy of, of resolving something is just you take off this burden, you take the burden off your shoulders and you just throw it. And we write something up and we say it's resolved and it's over. And I tell them I had clients, you know, that I would take to mediation and they would always tell me, you know, oh, thank God that's over when they resolved it. Now the eighth and the ninth, the final Beatitudes, talk about happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are those who are reviled for God. My experience with this is, I had two seminary classmates a couple years ago. There are two young ladies, they're both like 25 to 30 years old, and they came from Burma. They're two young missionaries who had, had been teachers in Burma. And in Burma, you still can't walk outside the door and talk about Christ. If you do, you're going to get arrested. And one of the girls had been arrested for that. They came to America for two years of theological education. Their ultimate goal was to become priests, Episcopal priests. But they left, you know, they graduated from school and went back, and they cannot be ordained priests in the Episcopal Church in Burma. Because if they are, they will be sought out and they will be killed. So they have to settle for being teachers. And they can at least teach, but they have to be very careful. You know, those, that's happy for those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. I mean, they really are persecuted. In the end, with all the, the Beatitudes that we talked about today, I think these two women really live out that Beatitude. And it really starts with the first one that we started with today. Happy are the poor in spirit, because they know their need for God, and they rely on God daily to keep them safe. We can learn a lot from these young women in Burma. You know, and from my wife who, you know, kind of really feels sorry for folks in, in tough spots. And also for that merciful policeman. You know, I probably should have got his, his badge and wrote his captain a letter of thanks. Um, you know, all those people rely on God and on doing the mission that God has sent them to do. And they're happy and joyful in their work that they do, the, the, the mission God set before them. And finally, at the end of the service every day, every Sunday, the deacon will say something like, let's go forth in the name of Christ to love and serve the Lord. And we respond, thanks be to God. In other words, those beatitudes that Jesus gave us in the gospel today they're really about loving and serving those outside as well as God in our lives. So remember the be attitudes and be as you grow. Learn to incorporate these into your the attributes you live with and live by every day. Amen. Amen. Amen.